Anywhere you look at in the news media, you see, you know, pending recessions coming up. Uh, in today's video, we're going to talk about what can you do to prepare for a recession to put your family in a better financial situation. Today, we're going to talk about six things to do to prepare to get ready for a recession, if one is possibly here. With all that being said, we're going to start it off. We're just going to ping pong back and forth. You know, Alex will give three. I'll give three. And our goal is here to set you up in a better financial situation to not be a victim of a recession, but maybe come out on the other side prosperous of the recession. With all that being said, Alex, pop it off. What you got for number one? The first one I got, um, and this is commonly heard or cliche, but it's payoff debt and specifically consumer debt. Um Credit cards, you know, car payments, um, just preparing to remove that debt so that you don't have that monthly ob obligation in a situation where you lose your job potentially. Right. And and I believe that right there is a key one. You know, people hear it, they hear it, they hear it, they hear it again, and they still don't they still don't do it. I mean, store cards, you know, like the Macy's, you know, Sears is not here no more. But uh, all the store cards from Secret and E, you know, Home Depot, Lowe's, uh, JC Penney's not here anymore. Probably the reason why they're not here because nobody's paying off their debt. Um, those are huge elements. And what does that do? Or what do you think that provides to the consumer by paying off their debt before recession actually hits? Um, I think that paying off their debt because most people, they, they're so accustomed to having like a debt payment monthly. And so removing that debt frees up in the, in the scenario where you have lost your job, it may not free up income, but it liberates you from having extra obligations or extra um, expenses that need to be paid. So if you're just limited down to your rent, your utilities, and that's it, then in no debt, you know, that's going to save you a lot more money to have to come up with than, you know, if you did have those debts on top of that. Because as uh, we've talked about before, the average car payment in the U.S. right now is $1,000. So if you're paying $1,000 on top of, you know, I've heard of some people paying up to three, four, five hundred dollars $500 in credit cards um, a month, removing that will... You know, it's going to save you a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars a month in extra payments that you have to make. And then, and then another thing is, like you said, in a scenario of people look, lose their jobs and they paid off their debt, and just you know, and then they got to find another job. So if you're, you know, your debt limit is a certain level, then your living expenses is a certain level. You have to find a job that at least cover that. And the recession is going to be harder. Well, it should be harder to find jobs that will pay you the same amount from the job that you were leaving. So if you cascade and take that debt off or you will use your scenario about $500 a month, then that gives you ability, you know, $500,000 a month that gives you the ability to temporarily take a job that's paying less and you can still take care of your needs that uh, have to be met at the end of the month, you know, shelter, transportation, food, water, things of that nature. And then while you, temporarily have to take a lower paying job, you're still living comfortably and you can still afford the things that you, you know, the normal necessities in life. So I like that one. I like that yeah. one. And I hear um, so go I, sorry, sorry. I hear it at work, like not about the recession, but I hear at work guys say like, man, if my house is paid off, I could work at I could be a Walmart greeter. <laughs> like, you know, and they they always say that. So it's like like you were saying, you have less you know, you don't have those monthly payments you have to make. You don't need as much income. You know, most people need high paying jobs to pay off all the debt that they have. But if you don't have any debt, you could settle for a, a lower job. You know, you don't have to be in that crunch and that stressful situation to try and find a job. Yeah, absolutely. For me, number one is prepare for recession. So you did number one, I'll do number two, sorry. So number two for me is prepare early and you know how I'm a big proponent of if you hear it in the news you're too late so for instance if you hear if they start saying in the mass news media we're in a recession understand 
A recession, uh, knowing that you're in a recession is a lagging indicator. To be in a recession, that's two quarters or six consecutive months of declining GDP. So once it's announced that you're in a recession, we already been in a recession for six months at that time. So when you hear now in the news of possible recession and things like that, you need to be preparing now. You need to be preparing now. So now give you six, eight month head start, you know, to pay off debt, get an emergency fund so you can have a, a cushion in case something bad happens. Um, start looking at different avenues of what your needs and your wants are. So preparing early as possible is the game because if you wait till you hear on a uh, you know news outlet, you know Fox, CNN, CNBC, hey, we're in an official recession, you're too late. It's the same way with investing. You know how I feel about investing. If you don't find the investment until it hits mainstream media, you're buying at the top of the emotional cycle. You're buying like cryptocurrency. Everybody, nobody didn't buy Bitcoin in a $3,000 range when it was just sitting there going sideways. Everybody's buying it at $27,000. They're buying it at $60,000 when it's all over the news of how high Bitcoin's going up. And they're expecting to go to $100,000. Then they're buying it at $60,000. And then it drops all the way back down to $1,600. I mean, 16,000. And then now those people, but the people that was buying it there at those high, higher levels was the people that saw it on the news and just thought like, oh, this is the next big craze. You're too late if you don't find out till they hit to the news media. And then that's why we create this content to prepare people and not surprise people so they can be prepared in the future. And that was my number two. What you got for number three? Number three I got, um, I don't really have an order for these, but... Uh... Learn a side hustle. Um, I would suggest that. But in a recession, it's going to be difficult to, you know, depending on what your side hustle is, to make money off of that. You know, if you're selling retail or whatever online or clothing online, people are probably not looking for designer clothing in a recession. Um, but if you learn something that is a needs base, uh, you know, a necessity business, if you, you know, mechanic work, um like handiwork anything like that or um i know for my mom surprisingly her doing nails at a salon people were still coming to her during the recession um she did say it was slower but people were still like she never lost any clients they just like instead of coming every week they came every two weeks so it was like you know something that will also target an audience where they feel like it's a need um, but something in that realm where uh, you can make income in the in the case that you do lose your job. Uh, yeah, just adding a couple more side hustles, uh, especially during the recession, uh, learning how to resume write. That's one. I mean, I know we're going to have AI here soon, but until then, people understand the, you know, the capacity of AI uh, writing resumes. That's going to be a huge backstop there. Um, Another one that's very low tech, then you probably hear from the Gary V's and things like that, but understand arbitrage, understand arbitrage, um, because when money gets tight, that don't mean it's not things that still are still needed. Like you said, need based. Um, and you're going to see it pick up is people like right now when the Cash is flush, you know, everybody just throwing out their household goods or they having yard sales, selling everything for pennies on a dollar. But those goods in a recession will be worth more because it will be whatever price they sell it at then it will still be way less than what you can get at a big box store. So don't be in a rush to throw out, you know, household items. There's a market for it because people still need some of that stuff. So, you know, use use the online platforms and stuff, you know, the yard sales, the Facebook yard sales. Uh, I don't know the other social media platform, but yeah. Facebook yard sales, that was my go to. Uh, and then be able to, you know, offload some products like that to put a, put a little cash flow in your pocket, you know, to help you weather the store. But go ahead. You got something else on that? No, that's a super important one because I always say this when I tell people that I, I'm never the one to like leave something on the side of the road for free. Like 
I'll just put it on Facebook Marketplace or I'll sell it on eBay or something. And people are like, oh, you're so cheap. I'm like, what? How, how does that make me cheap? Because I'm trying to make money off of what I'm trying to get rid of. But people need to keep that in mind. Like, I see so many down to like appliances, like washers, dryers, fridges, furniture, just for free on the side of the road. And furniture is a big one, too. I mean, you can get, you know, for a dresser, 50 bucks and people just like, hey, just take it for free. And they'll even list it on Facebook Marketplace for free. So you're taking the time out of your day to publicly list it on an app for free. Like, you, like it, you're just benefiting somebody else. But that's a yeah, that's a big one. Um. So you did number two. So my number two, which is number four total on the list, um, is prepare. When I'm saying preparing, I mean right now, early is. Start auditing your circle. You don't want to be sitting in a recession or going into a recession and having a lot of pity parties with people talking about, oh, how bad it is. Because the more you sit and complain, it's time that you can be doing other stuff. They're going to bring down your morale or vice versa. You're going to bring down their morale and keep them. And you're, you're going to keep each other not motivated if you hanging around low efficiency people. You need to start looking at people that's trying to do things, that's trying to overcome the situation. I always say, no matter what situation I'm in, I'm trying to be harder than the situation. Like in case recession hits, let's say I'm making $50,000 a year. Recession hits, I already see the recession hitting. I still have my job. I'm living like I, my job was impacted and I'm only making $25,000 a year. So I'm harder than the situation. Finding ways to stack capital, you know, only talking to people that's trying to maneuver to find an escape, not people that's just laying there and just saying, oh, well, this recession, I don't have no choice and don't have no motivation to do anything. The people that that's going to be like that, low efficiency, low motivated people are the people that's going to wait till the news say I'm in a recession before they try to make an adjustment or the world's going to make them have an adjustment by losing the job. So all of your circle and be around people that's out there just striving. I know it's, I know you're probably looking at the people around you now, like I don't have anybody like that. Find people like that. Trust me. It'll be, even if you just got to have a little group on social media and y'all send messages to each other just to motivate each other to do it, you know, find little nuances and knickknacks that maybe worked in uh, South Carolina that maybe you can bring to like IE Florida or wherever. Those are the people that you hang around is going to be the people that can get you through it better. I mean, I remember 08 when um, I was in Texas. I just had a friend that just happened and I wasn't, you know, conscious of, you know, auditing my circle. But I just had a, a, a friend that was a big time hustler. He always found something to do even during a recession. And he was always just clicking and making it happen, clicking and making it happen. And that just kept me motivated, thinking there's something out there, something out there. And I'm not talking about job-wise. I'm talking about just, you know, add-ons that I can add on to my family to bring more income in, find ways to cut expenses, just to weather the storm and try to come out on the upper end of it. Yeah, that's a big one. My number five is, um, this is also cliche and always heard and talked about, but a six-month emergency fund. Um, I think if you... Uh, pay off your debt, as I said in the beginning, and then have six months of funds um, that will give you it's it's not to say, hey, take a six month vacation. It's just here's six months to look for the next job or find that figure out what you're going to do as far as income. And um, and it will put you in a situation where you're not as, uh, you know, stressed trying to sell, you know, your kids and stuff. So you, <laughs> yeah, that's Kirby's first option. Sell the kids. <laughs> that's my first option. Trying to sell them, get those, get those expenses off the books. <laughs> yeah, but um, but yeah, six month emergency fund and have debt paid off. And like I said, they, you know, Dave Ramsey talks about that all the time. But it's true. I think in a recession, that's, uh, you know, those two are gonna go far. But that's my number five. All right. And before I get to number six, please hit the like button. If if anyone if one of these helped you, hit the subscribe button. If uh 
you think that you'll be able to uh, tackle one or all six of these uh, items. But my number six, my number six, and this is the thing that uh, investors like myself like, is if you do the, you know, five, five things we mentioned previously, previously, you start early and you start building up a cash for, you know, I would say six to 12 month emergency fund. I say save every dollar that's above a necessity. And it's the reason why I'm saying that because as you listen to this video right now, it's going to be millions and millions of people that's just going to play victim. It's going to be millions and millions of people that's just not going to take any action. It's going to be millions and millions of people that will be affected by the recession and they do nothing about it. And then they're forced to sell things. I mean, things from cars to watches to uh, homes. And if you're a person, let's say, just don't have a home, a live-in home, and you've been waiting for a time to be able to buy a property. I'm not expecting home prices to drop, but I'm expecting that in this time that you prepare, you can build up a big enough cash reserve and you can find somebody in a distressed situation that they're in the middle of a short sale. And I've actually seen a couple of short sales online the other day, but they're in a, a, in a short sale situation. They're in a position where you maybe can consume their mortgage and it has a consumable mortgage, meaning that you could just take over the mortgage payments that they have, you know, going through a bank and all that, or you could do subject to, uh, but it will provide a lot of opportunity, but I already start looking at what you need or what, how you want to, or what you want to accomplish in the next, and I don't know how long the recession will last, but for the next two to five years, they go like, all right, I want to be able to buy my first house. I want to be able to buy you know, a car at a decent price. I want to, you know, whatever, watch. I don't care if it's luxury. I don't give a care if it's a necessity. I'm not saying buy these things during a recession when you prepare it, but build up that capital uh, hoard to when you get the opportunity to take advantage of distressed prices, that's when you take take care of them. Just like you don't start preparing for a recession when you hear you're already in a, you're already in a recession, you don't want to start uh, looking for, you know, stressful situations when the uh, news media say we're out of a recession. Again, anytime you hear the news media, you're too late. These events already happen. Um, I mean, a couple of people know my story is I made a lot of money in 2000, you know, even buying this house. I got it for a huge discount. 2016, when everybody was still worried that we in a recession, housing prices going to keep going down. I made a mint on capturing uh, assets at a very, very, very discounted price. So that's what you should be doing now, preparing all these five things we said to prepare to set your life up better. Because before the recession, the only thing I had a house that was almost underwater. I got out of that situation. And from then on, I just kept building a cash for building a cash for building a cash for to take advantage of distress situation and no people i'm not here out here shaking mom and pops out of the out of their house that's not what i'm doing but i'll shake an investor out of their house too because investors and you know homeowners are two different things to me but but that's but that gives you the opportunity but mom and pop will uh have an opportunity for you to get different assets you need i mean i mean talking to y'all ballers that want rolex watches and all that other stuff it will be opportunity to buy i actually bought uh um and I mess up the name of the uh what Movado. I did buy Movado here in Florida on a major discount too. Oh really? So I'm not I'm not anti I'm not anti uh all things. <laughs> but this was after the recession, but before the news was said we was after the recession. But yeah. Gotcha. Well guys, with all that being said, if you like the video, hit the like button, leave a comment down below, uh subscribe, share, and we'll see you guys in the next video.